In this video, we're going to be discussing the knee-to-wall test, which is a special test used in the assessment of functional dorsiflexion range of motion, particularly in the closed chain. The knee-to-wall test is also known as the weight-bearing lunge test or the dorsiflexion lunge test. Now recall that the normal dorsiflexion range of motion that's given in most textbooks is being at least 20 degrees. So here's an important question. If you can easily take a goniometric measurement of dorsiflexion range of motion with the patient in supine or sitting, why would you go to the trouble of doing this test? We just mentioned that the knee-to-wall test measures functional dorsiflexion range of motion in the closed chain. But if you look at the typical measurement of dorsiflexion, either in supine or sitting, that's in the open chain position. Now, open chain dorsiflexion is more applicable for activities like gait or ascending stairs. If we consider a patient that has a plantar flexion contracture and their dorsiflexion range of motion, therefore, is negative 5 degrees, they don't have any dorsiflexion at all. They're not even able to get to neutral at that point. So during mid-swing of gait, they're likely to drag the foot across the floor, and that increases the likelihood of falling and further injury. And it also makes it difficult to ascend stairs because that foot and the toes have to clear the edge of the stair with each time you go up one. Okay? But what if your patient is an athlete? Take, for example, this squat shown here. At the depth of this squat, she's got about 35 degrees of closed chain dorsiflexion range of motion, well in excess of the textbook 20 degrees, so she should have no problem with gait or clearing stairs. One thing you'll hear about powerlifting competitions is that for the squat to count, on the descent, the thigh has to break parallel meaning the hip crease, which is about right here, has to descend below the knee, which it clearly does. But for some people that struggle with squat depth, they may think that the limitation is tight quads, and the tight quads are limiting the amount of knee flexion they can get on the descent. Or maybe there's an intrinsic knee flexion limitation, but one thing that's often overlooked is the amount of this closed chain dorsiflexion. She's got about 35 degrees, I said. That appears to be plenty for her hip crease to descend below the knee. If you've got somebody with a gross dorsiflexion range of motion deficit here, it doesn't matter how loose the quads are, it doesn't matter how flexible the knees or the hips are, at some point you will not be able to descend any further and maintain balance without increasing that dorsiflexion range of motion. Here's the guy who set the Olympic snatch world record. You can see right there, he's got about 49 degrees of dorsiflexion range of motion. Now with a snatch, the key is to be able to get as far as you can underneath the weight. So in general, with a snatch, the more you can descend, the better. And you're going to be able to descend more if you've got a greater closed chain dorsiflexion range of motion. So when it comes to picking the appropriate assessment or treatment, etc., always take into account your specific patient. Obviously for this guy, closed chain dorsiflexion range of motion is going to be much more meaningful than open chain dorsiflexion range of motion. To perform this test, the patient's going to be positioned in half kneeling, as you see right here, with the foot of the test side ankle facing the wall in such a way that an imaginary line drawn through the heel and the big toe are aligned on a tape measure on the floor. Note that the tape measure does not have to be there while you're performing the test. You can always add it in after the test is complete. So from here, the patient will lunge forward until their knee touches the wall by dorsiflexing in the closed chain with their heel still in contact with the floor. And note that in this initial positioning, my hallux, my great toe, is in contact with the wall in front of me. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to dorsiflex forward, try to touch my knee to the wall, which I do right there, and notice I'm attempting to keep my heel in contact with the floor. Okay, I'm able to do this. So what I'm going to do from there is I'm going to continue moving the foot away from the wall, slowly but surely, and then dorsiflexing forward, trying to touch my knee to the wall, until no more dorsiflexion is possible without the heel losing contact with the floor. Okay, so I've got a little more dorsiflexion in me. So I move the foot away from the wall a little bit, and then same thing. Try to keep the heel in contact with the floor, touch the knee to the wall. I was able to do that, so let's back it up a little bit more. Knee to the wall, closed chain dorsiflexion, that's fine right there. But then watch this, watch my heel about right there. 
there it's starting to come off. So that's my limit right there. So I just need to back it in a little bit, my foot that is, and find the point where I can touch my knee to the wall and the heel's not coming off. And it's right there, okay? So now I need to get a measurement of dorsiflexion here. And there's two ways to do it. There's an indirect method and a direct method. Now the direct method is kind of obvious. You would just use a goniometer using the typical landmarks for measuring dorsiflexion. But I can also do this via an indirect method. So here I have my tape measure parallel to my foot, and I'm going to measure the maximum distance from the wall to the tip of my big toe, and this distance is measured in centimeters, and it looks to me that it's about 8.3 centimeters. And note that each centimeter corresponds to approximately 3.6 degrees of ankle dorsiflexion. So the indirect calculation would be as such. My wall to hallux distance was 8.3 centimeters, so my dorsiflexion range of motion is approximately 8.3 centimeters times 3.6 degrees per centimeter, and then I multiply 8.3 times 3.6, and I get approximately 29.88 degrees. I'd probably just go ahead and round that up to 30 degrees. 30 degrees dorsiflexion in the closed chain. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.